Welcome to worship this fifth Sunday of Easter, in which we celebrate Mother's Day. Loving God, remind us this day of all those who have enriched our lives like mothers, teachers, nurses, doctors, cooks, gardeners, pastors, artists. Refill them with love and restore them and us to your service. Our call to worship this morning comes from Psalm 31. Let us read responsively. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net which is hidden for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me through your steadfast love. Our hymn today is from the United Methodist Hymnal, number 462, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. We will sing verses 1 and 2. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the Sith. Trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood, just in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing cleansing blood. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. Let us join now in the prayer of confession. You love us without questioning. Heal and bring wholeness without prejudice. Embrace us as a parent would their child. Forgive us when we forget. 
feel isolated and alone, don't know where to turn. Forgive us when we fail you. Choose those we minister to. Do not listen to your word. You love us without questioning. May we bring compassion, healing, and peace without prejudice to all those to whom you lead us. Now, in a moment of silence, I invite you to lift up your own prayers of confession to God. Hear these words of assurance. Even though we have forgotten and failed, still God absolutely loves and forgives us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And now let us join our hearts together as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us join together in the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. The first reading today comes from one of the letters that were sent in the beginning of the spread of Christianity. It comes from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 2 through 10. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture. See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious. And whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you, then, who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. May God add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. This song is called, I Know Who Holds Tomorrow. One of the verses says, I don't know about tomorrow. It may bring me poverty, but the one who feeds the sparrow is the one who stands by me. And the path that be my portion may be through the flame or flood, 
but his presence goes before me and I'm covered with his blood. I don't know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from its sunshine for its skies may turn to gray. I don't worry or the future for I know Our gospel for today comes from the 14th chapter of the gospel according to John, verses 1 through 14. And today I'll be reading from the inclusive Bible translation. Don't let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith in me as well. In God's house there are many dwelling places. Otherwise, how could I have told you that I was going to prepare a place for you? I am indeed going to prepare a place for you. And then I will come back to take you with me, that where I am going, you may be as well. You know the way that leads to where I am going. Thomas replied, but we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus told him, I myself am the way. I am truth, and I am life. No one comes to Abba God but through me. If you really knew me, you would know Abba God also. From this point on, you know Abba God, and you have seen God. Rabbi Philip said, show us Abba God. And that will be enough for us. Jesus replied, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and still you do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen Abba God. 
How can you say, show us your Abba? Don't you believe that I am in Abba God and God is in me? The words I speak are not spoken of myself. It is Abba God living in me who is accomplishing the works of God. Believe in me that I am in God and God is in me. Or else believe because of the works I do, the heart and truth of the matter is, anyone who has faith in me will do the works I do and greater works besides. Why? Because I go to Abba God. And whatever you ask in my name, I will do, so that God may be glorified in me. Anything you ask in my name, I will do. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, what a blessing, O oh God, to know that you hold us, that you hold the future, that all we need to be focused on right now is you. So open us up wherever we are and whatever is going around, on around us, that we might only hear your voice and your message. Amen. Today we hear Jesus saying, do not let your hearts be troubled. If you have attended a funeral which I have officiated, you most likely have either heard part of this passage or heard me reference this passage. I love the imagery of a place for all of us, that God has not only prepared a place for each one of us, but that Jesus will come and take us there himself. And I also love to reiterate Jesus' words about not having a troubled heart. He spoke these words because he knew his disciples were anxious. They were concerned. He had just told them he's about to die. He told them that one of them will betray him. He told Peter that he will deny them and that he's going somewhere where they can't go. Uh, yeah, Jesus, we're stressed. And so he comes and tells them, don't let your hearts be troubled. In an article in a magazine, Christian Century, I read, Nanette Sawyer, a Presbyterian pastor from Chicago, shared that many translations of the Bible use the English word believe for the Greek pisteo. But we have flattened this word so that it conveys to most listeners the sense of intellectual assent, where we believe in our minds. But this Greek, pisteo, and I apologize, I'm sure I'm not pronouncing it right, has more of a connotation of trust, of fidelity. It's a relationship thing not an intellectual thing. So Jesus tells them to trust in God when he says believe. Trust in him. He implicitly tells them to trust also in themselves and in the relationship that they have built up over the course of these last few years while they were with him. You do not know the way, he asserts, I am the way. And you know me, so you don't need to be worried. Trust yourself to know what you already know. Trust what we have done here together and keep doing it. Keep loving each other as I have loved you. Trust yourselves, trust me, trust God. This is what I would call a love language, meant to reinforce the love relationship between Jesus and the disciples. It asserts devotion, commitment, and now it can be transferred to us. 
this has helped me a lot during this time of which we've been apart. Because like the disciples, I know what it feels like to be anxious. I know what it feels like to be worried. But when I hear these reassuring words, and not only hearing it, but also seeing that they took to heart what he said and they embodied it. In the book of Acts, we see how the disciples continued to minister to one another, how they were infilled with the Holy Spirit, and how they continued to do the ministry which Jesus had started even when they were thrown in jail. They were told not to do anything in the name of Jesus, but yet the early apostles continued to pray, continued to teach in the temple, continued to preach and heal. And many, many came to believe and followed the way. They could have easily thrown in the towel knowing that they were on the same track as Jesus, that they would be persecuted and even could be crucified for their work. But they didn't bow down to the religious authorities or the political authorities. Instead, they held on to these words from Jesus. They trusted in the Holy Spirit and went about the work of spreading the good news. The psalm that we read and Peter's letter both mention rocks. I have been encouraging over these last few weeks to hold on to your worry stone whenever you need it. God is described many times in the Bible as a rock, as something that is a solid foundation, a shelter in times of distress. Our faith is not built on sinking, shaky ground. Our faith is built on that solid cornerstone. It can withstand any storm. The way for us to not have trouble in our hearts is to stand firm on that foundation. Trust Jesus. Trust your relationship with him. Our future is in the hands of love, the heart of God. Another thing I love about this passage is how Jesus calls God Abba. It's an intimate name that a child would call a parent. Much like how in the book, The Shack, God is called Papa. God is not distant, but a parent who loves tenderly, who protects faithfully who wants to know us intimately. And Jesus knows that relationship, and so that's why he can share it with his disciples, because he himself cried out to God and went to times to be with God, Abba. On the cross, Jesus said, Into your hands I commit my spirit. This is the kind of relationship that he wants us to have. To be able to let go of our need to control the future. To let go of our anxieties about what is going to happen. And to allow God to comfort us. Jesus reminded his disciples, and he reminds us today, to trust in God whenever our hearts are troubled. Steadfast love is what God shows and what we are called to offer to one another. In this way, we are also the presence of God to those who are struggling, to those who do not feel that quiet. Pass it along. Pass along the comfort, the trust, the love that Abba God supplies. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Hear these words anew right now. Do not let your hearts be troubled. 
God's got this. God's got you. How sweet it is to trust in him. Amen. We are better together. When we join our hearts and our minds together, we discover that God makes us stronger, being built upon one another like living stones in the house of the Lord. So let us join together now and commit ourselves again to the Lord. Let us join together in the prayer of dedication. Receive our gifts, O God, author of every good gift. Out of the bounty of our hearts, we respond with faithful generosity and love. May these gifts become blessings for others as they have been a blessing for us. Amen. I continue to thank you and appreciate the prayer requests that you have submitted to us. We ask that you continue to share those as well as if you would like to be in our prayer group, let us know and we will send you out an email each week of the joys and concerns that have been lifted up. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for this day that you have given to us. This day in which we honor our mothers and all the wonderful women who have helped to raise us. Mothers come in many different forms and today we celebrate them all. As much joy that is felt today, there is also sadness. For those mothers who have joined the cloud of witnesses, for those mothers whom we miss today, we give you thanks. And we ask that you enfold your comforting arms around those who mourn them. We also ask that your presence be among the mothers who are mourning the loss of children today. Hold them in a special place, O oh God. Bring the peace that passes all understanding, for we know that you are the one who can quiet those troubled hearts. For those who wanted to be mothers but were unable to be, we lift those up to you. For the mother-child relationships where there is strife, we ask a quieting presence. Begin to heal the hurt. Oh God, for those who want to be with their mothers but aren't able to be to due to the virus concerns, help them find new ways, special ways to connect today. Oh God, for those who may be expecting, we ask that you grant them good and safe health. Oh God, we lift up to you all the joys that we have upon our hearts, all the concerns that we share. We know that you care so deeply for each and every one of us, for each and every prayer we lift up to you. And so we give you all that is upon us. We relieve ourselves of the burdens for we know that you take everything and anything we want to give to you. Help us to free our hearts so that we can freely give to others. In your name, we pray all of this. Amen.
receive now the benediction. May God, Abba, Papa, Mother, Mama, Grammy, however you see God right now, may God take away your troubles and may you feel a quiet in your heart so that you may see more clearly the calling that God has placed on your life. Let us commit ourselves again into the hands of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior, be at peace. Amen. Amen.